اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین السلاۃ والسلام علی خیر خلق ہی محمد و علیہ الطاہرین respected brothers and sisters as we mentioned in our introduction to this course that there will be two portions one will be addressing the background the philosophy the akhlaq related to relationship between men and women and marriage and the part 2 which we are discussing now will be addressing the legal the fiqhi aspect of the issue or the topic and subject now in this regard the first issue is relationship between men and women islam has very special instructions when it comes to the relationship between men and women some people think that islam has restricted completely interaction between men and women that is not true that is not correct Islam has allowed under certain conditions interaction or relation between men and women but not absolutely and unconditionally due to number of reasons of course and those reasons are discussed in the first part we not here to discuss the reasons here we discussing law but mainly to protect women's dignity women's chastity and not letting doors and opportunities open for men to abuse mainly that is the main purpose of these revolutions and therefore i said right through theme is love and mercy even background of these laws and revolutions which sometimes appear to be very tough and strict but in reality they are based upon the same principle of love and mercy if you remember i said mercy sometimes mercy appears in form of anger you love your child right but if he is naughty you need to discipline him now disciplining a child appears to be you know not so great it appears to be very hard and tough but that disciplining of child is mercy to the child is a favor to a child is not a bad thing for child child requires that must be disciplined and those parents who do not they do not do a favor to their child they do in fact a non favor anti favor to the child similarly islam and sharia an islamic law creates a structure which sometimes is restrictive but considering the greater interest of the people and especially the vulnerable especially the weak especially those who are at the receiving end which unfortunately in most of the cases is women okay now 
let us speak about relationship now can men and women without having any formal relationship means of being husband and wife can they meet can they talk can they speak can they communicate can they socialize at least or whatever or not that's a first and basic question but before asking this question i need to explain that islam and islamic sharia and fiqh has divided men and women based upon the relationship into two categories mahram and non mahram mahram and non mahram the laws applies on mahram do not apply on non mahram what is mahram mahram is a relationship between men and women basically results in a situation that marriage between them is not allowed haram that's a criteria basically but then there are some examples where you know even marriage is haram but still woman is non mahram i will give you example anyway who are mahram who are the people's mahrams first of all of course is from men side mother number 2 sister number 3 sisters of mother number 4 sisters of father number 5 mother of mother mother of father and similarly as above you can go they are all regarded mahram from woman side from woman side father of course is mahram brother is of course mahram fathers brothers are mahram mothers brothers are mahram fathers father is mahram mothers father is mahram so your aunts are mahram paternal or maternal your uncles are mahram paternal or maternal okay your brothers and your sisters are mahram okay this is the principle now you can go other way around also so children of your sister children of your own sister you are a man and children of your sister will be mahram to you because you are brother of your mother so if your sister has a daughter huh you will be brother of his her mother and i just now explained to you brothers of mother are mahram for men sisters of mother are mahram sisters of father are mahram is it clear this is basically blood related mahrams but then there are some mahrams who are not blood related but due to contract they become mahram for example when you get married to somebody naturally husband becomes 
mahram and for husband wife becomes mahram similarly for husband mother in law becomes mahram for his wife father in law becomes mahram are you with me or not but what about father what about brother in law what about brother in law brother in law is not mahram brother in law is not mahram sister in law not mahram it's a very common you know confusion people think that my brother's wife is like my sister so she's mahram no 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 like sister is something else she is like sister but not sister so brother's wife is not mahram your wife's sister is also not mahram now this is the case where you cannot get married to your wife's sister at one time you are not allowed to marry two sisters at one time but still so it's haram to marry her yes but at the same time you can she is not mahram ha she is still non mahram so this is brief list of mahram right they are your mahrams and these are your non other than that everybody else is mahram your husband's brother of course mahram non mahram sorry Uh, and and so on your husband sister's husband you are non mahram your own sister's husband non mahram your own sister's husband a sister there are two sisters now your sister's husband is non mahram as i explained to you just now this way or that way you can come from both sides so these are this is the division this is the distribution between people in a family or generally in a society that you get people who are mahram and you get people who are non mahram laws regarding mahram are different laws regarding non mahram are different let us talk about laws about maharam or those people who are mahram to you like your own sister like your own mother like your aunt or in case of woman your father your uncle huh? and so on in this case fatwa opinion of our ulama is that that you are first of all allowed to socialize with them interact with them freely without any basically restriction and you do not have to cover your whole body in front of your mahare only your private parts is compulsory to cover so in front of your brother you can remove your scarf now some people are very you know it's very strange to them it means uh what about my whole shoulder what about my leg for example can i expose it in front of my brother yes shari point of view yes it's not haram but not of course recommended at least to cover decently in front of them but end of the day for example if you get sick and you need somebody to check your body naturally your mahram has a right to check you you understand 
So in principle, it is not haram and you are not necessarily compulsory for you to cover your body from maharam. This is the principal position. Let us now talk about non-mahram, strangers in other words. Not strangers what we understand in our language. We are talking about strangers, what Sharia calls them stranger. So your brother-in-law is also a stranger. Your sister-in-law is also a stranger. Your cousins are strangers, children of your uncle, children of your Aunt, they are all Namahram. Now when it comes to relationship between Mahram, two Namahrams or two strangers who are to each other non-Mahram, of course Sharia in principle, first of all, let me explain to you, does not encourage, does not encourage socialization, Interaction, free mixing, no. No. Women and men supposed to respect each other and keep the limits and borders of each other. But it does not mean that they cannot talk to each other. They cannot work together. They cannot speak they can speak, they can talk, they can walk, they can work, but with conditions. Number one condition is that woman is, has a responsibility to cover her body, accept her face and her hands till wrist, hands till wrist and this portion of the portion of the sorry face. She can expose, hmm? she can reveal that. But other than that, no, not allowed. This is one condition. So you can meet, you can speak, you can talk. But provided that your body is covered. From man's side also it is haram on men to look at body of a non-mahram woman, a strange woman. Other than again face and you know hands until wrist. Other than that man is also not allowed to look at woman's body, hairs, chest, I don't know, hands, whatever, not allowed. Similarly, man is also supposed to cover himself decently, especially in front of woman. He is not supposed to expose his body generally. And for women also it is not allowed to look at those parts of the body of men which are normally not exposed. Head, chest, like I don't know, parts of other body. Of course private words are haram in any case. Private parts only allowed between husband and wife. But other than husband and wife, no one is, of course, allowed to look at private parts of each other. Not at all. Mahram, non-mahram, that's a revolution and law for everybody. Okay, so... This is one, one condition. The second important condition is this. That even with hijab, even while woman's body is covered, there is one more condition that if in a room, in a place, there is only one man and one woman, 
and there is no third person there in other words they are alone and there is a possibility which is always almost there that they will fall in haram there is a danger there is a possibility of falling haram again this company is also not allowed this company is also haram and not allowed but if someone is confident and someone is you know has confidence in himself or herself then or, or, or the environment is like work environment of course sometime work environment itself is very dangerous that's how this whole story of gender based violence and sexual harassment which is the biggest problem of our society today you see islam they say that the biggest abuse against women especially sexual harassment takes place at workplace when men takes benefit of environments of a situation where nobody else is there and they make advances and they try to abuse the woman and destroy the dignity and respect of the woman therefore islam at all does not encourage that one man and one woman alone in a closed room in a closed environment where other people do not have access not recommended but as i said sometimes for studies for work it becomes almost compulsory in those conditions with extreme restrictions and precautions it is allowed but again condition is that that there is no fear of haram if a woman feels that unfortunate for example working in the lab right working in a all alone place everybody is gone back to home now nobody other than one man and one woman left now naturally there is a very you know fertile ground for fitna for haram for shaitan to come and misguide in that cases of course it is not allowed but it, as i said especially looking at the our present world our present condition realities on the ground it does not mean that islam discourages women from working women can work of course primary responsibility again of women is as i just now arsh explain to you is at home but today's life demands of today's life challenges of our life sometimes ask from women to work or woman wants to work she has study she wants to have a career nothing wrong with it absolutely nothing wrong with it but this must be in mind while islam of course very heavy handedly deals with the man and his behavior but at the same time tries the best not to allow situation and conditions which are conducive which are suitable which makes it easy for men to you know make advances and do something which will harm the dignity and respect of women this is the standard this is the criteria now application of that criteria is with you people your sister your sisters on your own we live in a world where majority of the women work or they have to work there is no option but at the same time you and sisters have to keep in mind this very very important criteria and principle صلوات الله محمد وعلى محمد non believer what i'm coming to that the doctor issue i'm coming to that i'm coming the doctor issue is separate i'm coming to that let me just principal issues then we'll get to that point also next issue so this is the criteria this is the principle regarding mahram and non mahram
question what about women who do not keep hijab of course some people do not keep hijab even if they are muslim but they don't keep hijab their iman is weak or whatever you want to call it but they don't practice hijab and what about non muslim women they also of course don't keep hijab so what about them in this case fatwa of our ulama is this that again looking at this type of woman's body but not all the parts of body but those parts of the body which they normally expose and reveal hmm, shoulders i don't know parts of leg and so on and so looking at those parts of body of these non hijabi women or the women don't keep hijab don't cover themselves is not haram allowed in other words you can look at non muslim women who is not keeping hijab or a muslim woman who does not keep a hijab but only naturally those parts which are revealed hum now question which brother hashim raised there are some okay before we go there let me just explain another issue very important issue which is a principal issue again we said that looking at na mahram's body is haram right men cannot look at na non mahram women's body other than face and hands but men can look at men's body other than private parts women can look at women's body other than private parts not haram mahram can look at mahram's body other than private parts not haram okay so that's why but in all these conditions there is one condition very important condition that even when you are allowed to look at each other's bodies you are only allowed to look without intention of enjoyment without intention of lust without intention of that you know what i am talking about so even if man is looking at body of another man with that intention haram the woman looking at woman's body with that intention haram astaghfirullah men looking at woman which is mahram like sister i don't know whatever whatever with that haram intention you know with that look you know look of lust and so on that is haram haram of course that is haram so when we are saying looking is allowed without intention without you know that inclination of haram and enjoyment and lust and so on and so on. so this is one issue another issue is touching lumps not looking but touching same principle applies 
mahram can touch body of mahram but a non mahram cannot touch body of non mahram cannot cannot touch body of non mahram even without intention of lust cannot you cannot look you cannot touch okay that's another principle now comes the next very important issue which brother hashim asked that there are certain situations where we are supposedly forced to look at non mahram's body or touch non mahram's body for example doctor for example doctor is doctor allowed to look at body of woman is woman is allowed to expose and reveal her body in front of a male doctor or vice versa is it allowed or not now you ask for the gynae not only gynae any doctor any doctor criteria principle is following if there is woman doctor available no then you are not allowed to go to a male doctor you go for female doctor but if there was no male doctor available then of course you are allowed to consult female sorry male doctor male doctor is also allowed to look at the body of his, his patient provided that there was no option available if he can treat a woman without looking at her body he must do that or for example if he wants to check is one part of the body then he must check that part of the body he is not allowed to look at whole body and similarly touching so he can use and she can use gloves before touching the body of his or her patient so if possibility of gloves is there that you can do your medical inspection with gloves then you are compulsory on you obligatory for you to use gloves to touch the body of non mahram so if there is option available no you are not allowed to go to male or female in the cases of men and women but if there was no option then yes you can go okay all right now touching one another issue regarding touching a very common practice in our community in our society is uh, hand shaking and very common wherever you go women extend the hand to men men extend hand to women to shake mm. not allowed ara and you are supposed to apologize sometime people feel very offended 
and especially myself being a religious leader and attending these different functions and programs and people dignitaries sometime you know big deal people they go oh, extend their hand and i said like that bow down out of respect for the lady that she must not think that i am because sometimes people think that we you know think women is untouchable women is dirty women is you know so therefore we don't want to touch the women no 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 we don't touch the women out of respect and dignity not out of disrespect and degradation but sometimes exactly opposite is thought so you need to explain that look according to our faith system out of the respect to you we bow down in front of you we put our head down we show our respect but we don't shake the hands some ulama not all not majority some ulama in exceptionally difficult conditions they allow shake hand they say if it's a if it's a possibility of big fitna as i just told you that you don't shake hand they make it a very big issue out of it hey, this person is rude he disrespected us he did not you know regard us human being he regard us sub human being that, that it becomes a very big issue in those exceptional conditions they allow shaking of hands but otherwise shaking of hand is you know not allowed okay so this is about basic relationship between men and women legally these are the laws of islam and islamic fiqh especially shia regarding women next issue i will discuss inshallah one or two more issues and then inshallah conclude the next issue is about nikah marriage marriage is highly recommended in islam highly recommended in islam prophet of islam said ma buniya fil islam bina'an ahabbu ila allah min at-tazwij there is no building there is no unit built in islam more beloved in eyes of allah than marriage two rakat namaz of a married person is 70 times more sawab of two rakat namaz of bachelor hadith says that majority of the people of jahannam are bachelors hmm aksar ahl an-nar uzab ummati highly highly recommended marriage quran commands us man kahu al-ayama minkum was salihin verses of quran number of verses of quran prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says an nikah sunnati fa man raghiba an sunnati fa laysa minni nikah is my practice and whoever avoids my practice is not from me okay that importance of marriage and unit of marriage inshallah in that akhlaqi discussion in detail will come here we are talking law so i just give you a little bit but then let's move to the law law says marriage is recommended marriage is recommended highly but it is not compulsory it is not fard in other words it's not like that that you must get married no you don't have to but highly recommended if someone can control himself 
have capacity of staying away from haram no problem quran for example speaks about nabi yahya he says hasura speaks about nabi yahya he says he was bachelor hasur he didn't get married huh so it's not haram but it is highly recommended yes marriage becomes wajib the same marriage becomes which is recommended becomes compulsory when when there is a possibility of falling in haram if you know that if you don't get married you will start astaghfirullah looking at other women astaghfirullah you will end up in some haram practices haram relationship may be or haram ways of satisfying yourselves hmm? you know what i'm talking about so watching i don't know pornography watching on the tv you know this that anything you know that if you don't get married you will end up in haram if that fear and danger and risk is there now marriage becomes compulsory and fard and wajib obligatory okay now when you want to get married to somebody legally talking detailed akhlaqi discussion in first part next week legal discussion i am talking when you want to get married to somebody naturally that person man or woman is non mahram is non mahram are you allowed to meet him or her are you allowed to look at her or him or not are you allowed to socialize with him or her or not you want to live your whole life with that person islam allows you islam gives permission to you that if you are serious serious about someone you can meet and look at that person without hijab without hijab you want to get a girl you want to get married to a girl you are allowed you have permission to look at that girl without hijab not only with hijab without hijab hmm? she can remove her scarf if she is for example have no hair maybe i don't know <laughs> she is bald huh so hello what about speaking and communicating again with with those conditions that yes you can meet her you can talk to her you can communicate with her provided it's not alone it's not in a situation where possibility of falling in haram is there if you go meet in a open public place no problem you can sit and talk and have a coffee and speak but go in a room alone all no 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 and also as i said serious now with this excuse that i want to get married you want to see 200 girls no 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 that's abuse today i see this girl tomorrow i see that girl no, not not like that no if there is a serious proposal then you are allowed to look at her she also she also can of course meet in 
she had. Next issue is marriage itself. Inshallah, next week. Okay, you met with each other, you saw each other, you liked each other, you agreed and you decided to marry. Now, how are you going to get married? What are the conditions of marriage? And how marriage is solemnized? Inshallah, next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.